Authorities have released more information regarding the deaths of Bo Geely and Macy Bailey, whose bodies were found in a pickup inside a Scotts Bluff storage unit on February 28th. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, after extensive investigation into the deaths of two Scottsbluff residents whose bodies were found 10 days after being reported missing, County Coroner Dave Eubanks says the deaths of 29-year-old Bo Geely and 18-year-old Macy Bailey were the result of accidental carbon monoxide poisoning. Their bodies were found on February 28th inside a pickup parked inside a storage unit on the west edge of Scotts Bluff. Eubanks says as part of this investigation, investigators from the Scotts Bluff Police Department and the Scotts Bluff County Sheriff's Department conducted many interviews reviewed numerous videos and used search warrants and subpoenas to obtain well over 1,000 pages of cell phone and social media records from multiple individuals. After receiving toxicology reports from the post-mortem examination, investigators from both agencies conferenced with county attorney staff and the attending physician. The determination of accidental carbon monoxide poisoning came after careful review of all relevant information by the investigative team. Eubanks adds that the investigators have informed both families of the results of the investigation in great detail and will continue to answer any questions they have, but notes that his office will release no further details because this is not a criminal case and the information is not public record. Well, as efforts continue to slow the spread of the coronavirus, the Panhandle Public Health District says there were no new cases to report yesterday, keeping the Panhandle's total number of confirmed cases at 27. Statewide, the number of new cases from Saturday to Sunday dipped from 101 to 59, but Nebraska did record its 18th COVID-19 death on Monday. The man was from Washington County and was in his 90s, and he had underlying health conditions. Through Monday evening, there were more than 11,300 tests that have been conducted, with 871 testing positive, or about 7.6%. Governor Pete Ricketts says April will likely be the most impactful month of the coronavirus in Nebraska and has been asking Nebraskans to follow these six rules to keep healthy. Stay home, social distance when at work, shop alone and once a week, help kids practice social distancing, assist seniors during these trying times, and exercise at home. Sticking with the governor as Governor Ricketts is rejecting a call from two state lawmakers to resume normal school and business activities in Nebraska right away. First of all, I agree with them 100% that we want to open up the state as quickly as possible. The big key, again, is what we've said all along, which is about making sure that we don't overwhelm the health care system. And so that's what we're working to manage this to. We've, we are, we've got our, you know, stay home, stay healthy here till the end of April. We're going to continue to focus on that for the you know, two and a half weeks or so, a little bit more than we got left in that. And then we will look at what can we do to start loosening up some of those restrictions, and we'll do that gradually over time. His remarks at his daily coronavirus press briefing came in response to a question about a newspaper column by Senators Steve Hallorian and Steve Erdman, both are conservatives who normally agree with the Republican governor. Well, coming up through the break, going to be a cooler stretch of weather across the region. Bill Boyer's in with your Tuesday evening forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. Local lending. We're here for you from start to finish. Keeping money in our economy. Supporting local jobs. Giving back to our community. Investing in entrepreneurship. making our quiet towns a destination. At Platte Valley Bank, we support local because we are local. Take your career to the next level with Chadron State College's online Master of Business Administration program, taught by experienced professors who care about your success. The accredited, fully online MBA program is backed by CSE's more than 100 years of education leadership. Flexible, eight-week courses let you work at your own pace, wherever you are, and CSE's experienced professors are committed to your success. Chadron State College. Real people. Real results. Join us today at csc.edu.
This is KNEV.TV weather from the KNEV Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Breezy conditions across the area early this evening. They're going to decrease in winds later on. It's going to take a little bit though, and temps going to fall down into the 20s, so not be as cold as what we were overnight tonight, but we're heading back there again tomorrow. Rain's going to develop in the afternoon tomorrow. Should turn to snow by evening. We're looking at a good shot of accumulating snow across the area. Heaviest probably going to be to our south along I-80. We'll talk about snow accumulations coming up here in just a moment. Yesterday we hit 37 degrees after a morning low of 13, well below normal for the highs and lows. Nothing additional in rain gauge, still just 11 hundredths for the month and just over an inch and a half for the year. Well, the last couple of weeks you can see this roller coaster. We start the 1st of April, nice, and we dropped quickly down from 70 to 26 for highs. We stay below normal, that normal high about 60 for this time of year. So then we head below normal and then back above normal here for a period of time Then we bounced around and then we're back down here on the colder side of things. We're going to stay down here below normal probably through Friday, uh, maybe Saturday, and then by Sunday things should warm up a little bit. Speaking of warm, there was no warm today for these temperatures. Two degrees in Alliance, 15 in Ogallala, nine set a new record low today in Scotts Bluff. Uh, nine degrees, eight in Sydney, nine up in Shadron, eight degrees in Gordon for lows this morning. Very, very cold air here across the region. 53 right now in Hayes, 47 in Hastings. We're in the mid 40s here in our area, a few upper 30s off to our west, and uh, 33 in Lusk, 39 right now in Cheyenne. Otherwise, most of us in the 40s, a little cooler here, Ballantyne over to Gordon and Shadron in the upper 30s as well. And look at these winds, pretty stout out of the west northwest bringing in cold air and even though those temperatures aren't too bad the wind chills pretty chilly into the 20s and 30s here across all of our region this afternoon as we head into the evening hours so we've got some stuff to talk about here weather wise we're going to be partly cloudy across the area as we go through the overnight hours a mix of clouds uh, and stars out there overnight tonight and lows not going to be as cold as last night but still into the teens and low 20s plenty chilly for this time of year. Now tomorrow things start to get more interesting as we put future cast in motion. We start off early. By afternoon we start to see some rain showers develop here across the region. Then tomorrow evening they quickly turn over to snow. Notice the heaviest snow concentrated here along and south of the North Platte River. That's where we do think the heaviest snow from all this is going to be. Highs tomorrow before that frontal system gets here. 52 in Scotts Bluff, 51 in Sydney, 54 in Ogallala, but only 39 up in Lusk for a high temperature tomorrow. Here's the snowfall totals. We'll show you two different models. We'll refine these better as we go to the forecast tomorrow. But for right now, this is what we're forecasting off the two models. The European model keeps the heaviest snow to the south of us along that I-80 corridor, heaviest from Cheyenne and then Wheatland down to Kimball and over towards Sydney with lighter amounts uh, here in the North Platte River Valley and lesser amounts up towards Shadron. Pretty similar with the uh, GFS model, although it's showing a little higher snow totals in those heavier areas, maybe, uh, maybe a foot or more in uh, areas around Cheyenne, Wheatland down to Kimball, slightly more for us here in the North Platte River Valley out of this system. So the GFS, again, forecasting a little more snow than the European, but everybody bullseyeing the southern area, the I-25 corridor along the I-80 corridor for the heavier snowfall totals. And uh, it's going to be a dicey call right here in the North Platte River Valley as to uh, we're going to end up with lesser or more snow. But notice pr both of these models have accumulating snow for all of us as we go tomorrow night and into the first half of Thursday. Breezy early tonight, partly cloudy, not as cold, lows down into the 20s. For tomorrow, we're dealing with uh, afternoon showers coming our way, 52 for your high. And then our seven day forecast brings uh, that snow into the forecast all the day on Thursday, especially in the morning, mid 30s is all for highs. Look by Saturday, though, we might be back to near 60, maybe above normal by Sunday. And then Monday, Tuesday right now, some indications are we could get into the low 70s with a return to a little more milder air. Looks like the next uh, storm system after tomorrow and Thursday would be poised to arise, arrive the following weekend. So we should be able to string together at least uh, five to seven days of some decent weather after we get through this system. This is Karen's land. It's been here a long time, and so is she. 
along with Mojo. The first fence post went up here. Now there's 5,000 of them. After the storm, she started the cleanup here. This is more than just land, it's home. Karen runs with us on a John Deere 3E Series tractor because who says a day's work has to take all day? Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 3E Series for more. Visit 21st Century Equipment in Alliance, Torrington, Scottsbluff and Bridgeport or visit 21stCenturyEquipment.com. As farmers make plans to return to their fields for spring planting, we urge farmers to be alert to the dangers of working near overhead power lines. Electricity is one of the most overlooked, yet deadly hazards of working on a farm. Beware of increased height when loading and transporting equipment on trailers. Avoid raising the arms of planters or cultivators or raising truck beds near power lines. So let's take extra caution this spring planting season. This message brought to you by Roosevelt Public Power District, your touchstone energy partner, the power of human connections. At TC and More in Scotts Bluff, we have toys and puzzles for your children, or they make a great gift. TC and More has craft activities, pretend play toys, and dozens of puzzles and games for all ages. We also have the largest supply of Melissa and Doug toys, and we still carry all of your classroom essentials. Remember to like TC and More on Facebook. TC and More, 1621 Broadway, beautiful downtown Scotts Bluff. Welcome back. Garing fire officials say a blaze that started in a fireplace chase led to the loss of a home for a rural Garing family of four on Easter Sunday. Firefighters were called to the home on County Road P, finding heavy smoke coming from the front entrance and attic areas. Chief Nathan Flowers says no one was at home at the time of the blaze as 24 Garing firefighters made entry and pulled out a family dog. The dog received immediate attention from staff outside. It took crews about an hour to completely contain the fire and another two hours to clear the scene. No injuries were reported and damage was estimated at $100,000. Firefighter Ministry is assisting the family who was affected by this fire. Well, the Gehring man is facing several felony charges stemming from a Wednesday night altercation. 43-year-old Jonathan Harris is charged with use of a deadly weapon to commit a felony, terroristic threats, assault, obstruction, and resisting arrest. Court documents say Harris got into a fight with a resident at the home and pulled a pocket knife on the victim and threatened to stab him. Harris is set to be back in court on Friday for his preliminary hearing. And from Scottsbluff County Court to the Nebraska Supreme Court, as a 38-year-old inmate serving a 35- to 40-year prison term for his 2014 Scottsbluff County conviction for sexually assaulting a child, has lost his latest appeal. Max Kano Samayoa, Samayoa claims that the district court erred in refusing to grant his request for an evidentiary hearing and his motion for post-conviction relief. Today, the high court ruled that his claims that his trial was unfair and that his constitutional rights were violated were unsubstantiated. In turn, the court found no error in the district court's determination that he failed to assert facts sufficient to demonstrate a violation of his constitutional rights and in denying his motion for post-conviction relief without a full evidentiary hearing. They affirmed the lower court's judgment. Well, coming up after the break, a Scotsbluff distillery has switched gears from vodka to hand sanitizer. Jabella Guzman catches up with owner Phil Mitchell right after this in Ag News. A guy brought me on a first date to Runza. And I'm like, are you trying to talk to me while I'm eating Runza? No, slow your roll. Don't get in the middle of this. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's cause it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, uh, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaf Heads. Small business feels anything but small. That's why there's First National Bank Small Business Free Checking, so you can focus on what matters most. This is KNEB-TV Ag News from the First National Bank Ag Desk.
First National Bank of North Platte, the bank to think of first. Great Plains Distillery in Scotts Bluff is helping out during the COVID-19 pandemic by making hand sanitizer for area organizations. Phil Mitchell, co-owner of the distiller, explains. Uh, I got calls from the cities, from the fire, uh, from the hospital to make hand sanitizer. So I decided to make it. Uh, it's very difficult to make because there's a certain recipe you have to follow by the FDA, otherwise you get in trouble. And so uh, it's very difficult to find the bottles and the products and the denaturing product I have to use. If it wasn't for uh, both of our labs here in Scotts Bluff, they actually hooked me up with the bottles and caps I needed. Mitchell is working with the vodka the distillery makes on a regular basis for customers and retailers. And so I have to denature it. That means I have to put certain chemicals in it that they require, and they actually give us the recipe. And they want you to be pretty precise with that. So it and uh, I have to blend all that, mix it, and then I uh, bottle it with my bottling machine over here. So, but uh, getting the chemicals was very difficult. Uh, I spent two weeks getting chemicals and bottles lined out. Um, and it's, some of the chemicals are pretty harsh. First bottles of hand sanitizer will be ready and go out to the hospitals, EMTs, and police force. But Mitchell says there will also be some for the public. I want everybody to be safe and get what they need, and the government's allowed us to do this. But if I was to make hand sanitizer just because I wanted to, I would have to get it approved by the FDA. Now they've given the approval and told us how to make it, and therefore we don't have to go through that process. We can get it out to the public right away. Great Plains Distillery will be making hand sanitizer and the public can purchase a 16-ounce bottle for $15. With KNEB.TV News, I'm Chabella Guzman. Why do I have First National Bank's free checking? For all the things that could happen. Like the fact that they automatically forgive one overdraft fee every year and they won't charge a fee if I accidentally overdraw my account. Up to $20. Best of all, if I use another bank's ATM, my bank won't charge me a fee. When things don't go as planned, it's nice to feel protected. Switch today. Now more than ever, you need an affordable unlimited plan that fits your family budget. That's why Vieira Wireless is introducing our better unlimited plan. It's our best priced unlimited plan ever, starting as low as $30 a month for four lines of unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data. Want high-definition video with rollover high-speed hotspot data? Then choose our best or ultra unlimited plans. The best value plans in America for everyone. Viero Wireless. Are you ready for better? When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar.
That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. At Elite Physical Therapy, we provide preventative and rehabilitative treatments that maximize function and promote well-being for patients of all ages. With two locations in Scotts Bluff and Gearing, we offer the convenience of you choosing your location with the same great services no matter where you go. Stop into one of our locations today in Scotts Bluff at 214 West 27th Street or in Gearing at 10th and M Street and see what Elite Physical Therapy can do for you. Treatment you need and care you deserve. At Platte Valley Bank, we want you to plan for tomorrow Will you enjoy today. With our personalized trust and estate planning services, our trust services can help you do just that. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in the financial institution you choose to handle your trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local and serving our friends and neighbors. We offer a highly personalized, full line of personal trust and estate planning. Give us a call today and see how our trust services can help you. And finally tonight, since last Monday, with low crude oil prices due to COVID-19 and lower demand for gas, as Americans continue to social distance, pump prices have fallen even further. In its latest weekly report, the Energy Information Administration reported that gas demand plunged to 5.1 million barrels per day from the previous week's rate of 6.7 million. AAA Nebraska's Rose White tells KNB News in some states the drop in prices has been dramatic with motorists saving a dollar or more per gallon compared to retail pump prices from one year ago. The low crude prices and lower demand for gas is attributing to the downslide in what we're seeing as retail price pump prices. In the latest survey, it shows that AAA's national price is currently $1.86 a gallon. If we look at Nebraska, the current pump price average across the state is $1.73. Now, compared to a year ago, motorists in Nebraska are saving $1.01 per gallon. With gasoline demand across the country running near a 30-year low, refineries are reducing production in hopes of balancing supply. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. I'll see you here next time.